Hello, and welcome from the Marine Science Institute, located right on the San Francisco Bay in the port of Redwood City, California. Our location allows us to conduct educational programs and includes many exciting features like our on-site aquarium and our 90-foot research vessel, the Robert G. Brownlee. At the Marine Science Institute, we work with all kinds of marine life that lives in the San Francisco Bay. Our mission is to cultivate a responsibility for the natural environment and our human communities through interdisciplinary science education. We collect a wide variety of animals on our ship that help us educate our students like bat rays, sculpin, flounder, and our favorite animal ambassador, the leopard shark. California is home to 40 species of shark and other cartilaginous fish. Leopard sharks is one of the most abundant. Sharks tend to get a bad rap, but like most of the 500 plus species of sharks, leopard sharks are gentle and harmless. Today, we're gonna to tell you a little bit about leopard sharks and their cartilaginous relatives. Before we can dive into leopard sharks fully, however, we need to learn a little bit about their habitat. Leopard sharks live in the Pacific Ocean, but breed in the San Francisco Bay. The San Francisco Bay is an estuary, which means a body of water that is mostly surrounded by land and has rivers that meet a sea or ocean. Our bay has cold salt water coming in from the Pacific Ocean, which is mixing with fresh water from the Sacramento and San Joaquin rivers, or more commonly known as the Delta. This mixture of salty and fresh water is called brackish water. Additionally, the bay is really shallow in some parts, making specific areas a perfect nursery for leopard sharks, as well as many other fish, sharks, skates, rays, and even harbor seals. Most of these animals will grow up in the bay and move into the ocean once they are bigger, returning to their breeding areas in the bay and starting the cycle over again. Unlike humans, sharks have no bones. Their skeletons are made of cartilage, meaning they are elasmobranchs. Cartilage is in our bodies too. It helps make up our ears and our nose, and it protects our joints. Shark's cartilage helps them stay light and flexible so they are able to move through the water more efficiently. Additionally, unlike humans whose teeth are attached to their jaws, shark's teeth are attached to their gums, which means they shed them often. A shark can lose up to 30,000 teeth in their lifetime. Because of this, they have rows and rows of teeth ready to move up any time a tooth is lost. So you, you can see here, we have a broken tooth. If this dusky shark was still alive, that tooth right there would take its place. Also, unlike humans, sharks are born with their teeth, ready for chomping. We've mentioned how sharks are different from humans, but let's talk briefly about how chondrichthys are different from other fish. Again, the major difference is going to be that cartilaginous skeleton. The majority of fish are considered osteichthys, which simply means they have a bony skeleton, such as tuna, salmon, and goldfish. Other differences, which you will see momentarily, are special adaptations, such as electrical receptors and spiracles. Bony fish also have swim bladders used for buoyancy that they fill with air, whereas sharks, with the aid of an oily liver, use propulsion to move up and down through the water column. Most bony fish have scales to protect themselves, while sharks have dermal denticles, which translates to teeth skin. Sharks are incredibly hydrodynamic due to this amazing adaptation. Looking more closely at some leopard shark skin allows us to see tiny placoid scales or dermal denticles. What makes this translation from denticle to teeth really interesting is that while shark scales are shaped like teeth, they are also made of dentin and covered with enamel, the same substance that makes up animal teeth. And like animal teeth, dermal denticles have different shapes and sizes, each corresponding to a different function. Denticles are like naturally occurring chainmail armor protecting the sharks against predators, abrasions, and parasites that could attach to their skin. When we catch leopard sharks on our ship, we often find parasites attached inside their gill slits or on their eyes. These are the few places parasites can attach to. Denticles also decrease drag and turbulence, allowing the shark to swim faster and quietly. The fastest shark is the mako shark, related to salmon sharks and the iconic great white shark. 
This is a head from a Mako shark. This is actually a, this is a small Mako shark um, or a young Mako shark. Mako sharks get a little bit bigger than this. Let's see if we can check out its dermal denticles. So it looks like the microscope is having a, a tough time focusing on its denticles. But if you can see, they are substantially smaller than that of our leopard shark skin and shaped differently. Denticles size and shape change depending on the body location. Again, form and function. Because of that, it makes it difficult, if not impossible, to identify a shark from dermal denticles alone. Like all other sharks, leopard sharks also have their skeleton all made up of cartilage, and the only part that they really have is going to be in their teeth. So if you take a look at the mouth, you can see their tiny little teeth. And they have many, many rows of teeth that they will replace over their entire lifetime. And right next to their teeth, they also have one of their six senses. They have something called ampullae lorenzini. So they're a bunch of little dots right next to their mouth and on their nose. And those are actually used to sense the electromagnetic field of other animals and creatures living in the water. Another sense that sharks have is a lateral line. And this is a line that we can actually see goes all the way down their body. And they can actually use this to sense movement in the water. So they're actually feeling water pressure moving around next to them as other creatures are swimming around. And schooling fish or schooling sharks can actually use this to help swim together in a group without bumping around uh, next to each other into other animals. Leopard sharks, like some other cartilaginous fish, are ovoviviparous. During this specialized birthing process, the baby leopard sharks develop in eggs inside a female shark's body. Unlike many egg-laying species, leopard sharks emerge from their eggs while still in their mother's body, their umbilical cords still attached to their yolk sacs. Female leopard sharks can birth up to 33 pups, each measuring 8 to 9 inches long. California bat rays, another native San Francisco chondrichthys, are also ovoviviparous and come out of the womb curled up like little cannolis. Let's join Ashley on the ship and learn about another one of our favorite elasmobranchs, the California bat ray. Welcome to the RV Robert G. Brownlee. We are sitting on the back deck right now or the stern of the ship. And what I have for you here is another one of our cartilaginous animals. This is a bat ray. It's related to sharks and rays because it also has that cartilaginous skeleton. So unlike our bony fish, it actually has cartilage making up its whole skeleton. And this one also has something really neat just behind its eyes. We can actually see something extra that they have that helps them breathe. Right here, just behind the bat ray's eye, you can see these little holes, and these are actually called spiracles, and this is something that leopard sharks have as well. And this is something connected to their gills that actually helps them get more oxygen and more water flowing over their gills. So if you've ever heard the myth that sharks need to keep swimming in order to breathe, that's actually not true for bat rays and leopard sharks because they have this extra organ that helps them get more oxygen flowing to their gills. They can actually spend extended periods of time down at the bottom of the bay, resting or looking for their prey. If we actually flip this guy over, we can actually see their gills on their belly right over here. Again, those spiracles are connected to their gills, helping pump extra water and oxygen. You can also see a little bit of this guy's mouth. And if you notice, you might not actually be able to see any teeth in their mouth because bat rays actually don't have teeth. So instead of teeth like sharks, they actually have bony plates that they use to crush their food and their prey. We catch most of our leopard sharks on our ship, and while the majority are released immediately, a few are kept as animal ambassadors to share with students like you. Before long, we release the sharks back into the wild but not before we attach these yellow tags to their bodies. These tags alert fisher people or others who may catch them to contact us about their size and location. This way we can track their movement throughout the bay. We have been running this specific tagging program since the 1970s. During our shoreside program, Discovery Voyage and Fish and Shark Inland Voyages, students and campers get the chance to become marine biologists by visiting, touching, asking questions, and making their own observations about leopard sharks and other marine life. At Marine Science Institute, our goal is to give students valuable hands-on experiences with marine life. 
teach them about our local bait organisms and environment, and encourage their own scientific and critical thinking skills. We offer a diverse list of programs for students, families, and teachers that can be viewed on our website at www.sfbaymsi.org. Please email us at info at sfbaymsi.org with questions or if you are interested in one of our programs. We can't wait to see you.